So how risky is it to lift your circular saw blade guard while cutting? I ran a video on controversial cutting techniques a couple weeks ago, and I mentioned that pinning the blade guard up is a really bad idea. I've talked about this numerous times over the years. But several people wrote in the comments that cutting with the guard down can also cause problems because it can get hung up in certain situations, which is entirely true. I'll admit that blade guard management is not always entirely straightforward and that, yes, dealing with the guard can sometimes be a headache. But there are pretty simple methods for avoiding blade guard problems. And that's what I'm talking about today on The Honest Carpenter Show. Real quick, remember that I've got a new free guide to the 10 worst power tool mistakes available on my website, thehonestcarpenter.com. It's a practical, very thorough look at the power tool mistakes that you absolutely must avoid. So be sure to check it out today at thehonestcarpenter.com. All right, so circular saw blade guards can vary by manufacturer, but they're all pretty much designed to work the same way. The guard covers the blade like a hub in the fully closed position. But as you drive the saw forward, the guard lifts slowly out of the way, allowing the blade to pass through the stock. Then when the cut is done, a spring in the hub immediately pulls the blade guard back down, once again enclosing the blade. It's a pretty straightforward and automatic process, and most of the time, you don't even really notice it. But some trouble can occur if the guard doesn't retract smoothly. For instance, you'll sometimes feel a slight tendency in the saw to twist as you first initiate contact. This is because the blade guard has a solid angled wall on the motor side. This angle is what hits the board and forces the spring to retract. But because the guard is offset from the motor weight of the tool, it can sometimes produce a bit of leverage or sideways drag. You can usually overcome this with smooth, direct pressure on the saw handle. But some people find this drag to be disconcerting. It can throw them off at the start of the cut. And this effect can be compounded when you start using the saw to make angled cuts. This may vary by model, but inside miters or outside miters will often exacerbate the guard hangup because lateral pressure on the guard further skews the swiveling effect. Sometimes it's really pronounced. You can't even really get the cut started. So in situations like this, carpenters will often manually lift the guard before starting the cut. Here, I'm dubious about the guard retracting the right way. So I set my sole plate on the material like usual, get the blade near the board, and then I actually reach over the top of the saw and raise the guard using this little lever. I pull the guard up to the point where I know it won't touch the board as contact initiates. Then I start the cut, really focusing on keeping the saw straight. When the blade is fully embedded, I ease the guard down so it's riding on the surface of the material and then finish the cut in a completely normal fashion. This makes the cut feel much smoother, and it doesn't have to strictly be used on angled cuts. Sometimes I'll lift the guard on a cut where I just want to ensure accuracy. The process is always the same. Get the saw supported, bring the blade close to the board, reach over the top of the hub, and draw the guard up carefully. Then, when you're secure, pull the trigger and start the cut. Manufacturers put these little levers on circular saws so you can draw them up. It's part of their functionality. And some cuts, like drops and plunges, actually require you to lift the guard in order to initiate blade contact. I did a whole video on that method. So I'm sure some people are saying, but you told us not to pin the blade guard up. Why is lifting it up okay? It's because this method is only temporary. It still allows the guard to retract after the cut. The danger of pinning the guard is that the blade is always exposed. This can easily cause running after the cut, as I demonstrated in my guide to the worst power tool mistakes. But when I lift the guard by hand, I'm being very careful. I'm using good form, standing to the side of the blade. I have both hands on the saw, and I'm cutting slowly and carefully. Then when I'm done, I let the guard swing back down to protect me. That's the bigger point here, how the guard finishes. People pinning the guard often don't get hurt while they're cutting. They get hurt after they're cutting when the saw comes into contact with something. But just lifting the guard momentarily still allows it to carry out most of its operation. Now, learning to do this does take some practice. It can feel a little weird at first. But my advice is to let the board carry the weight of the saw. That's where a lot of your stability comes from. Then, pull the guard before you start cutting. This way, your hand isn't reaching near the spinning blade. And ease the guard back down gently. Don't let it snap shut. That can cause the saw to dance or even to bruise your wood. If you're gonna lift your guard for a cut, please always exercise caution while doing it. Circular saws are dangerous, but if you do it properly, lifting the guard can increase your stability and prevent guard hangups. I hope that helps. 
I'll link some good circular saws below in case you're just now starting your tool collection. And I'll link our free guide along with our other freebies, so check those out. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you'll consider subscribing. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.